All right, today we'll be doing some core aeration with this Bluebird 742 aerator. All right, so in my last video, I broke the news that I was doing some crazy stuff like trying to keep this Bermuda from going dormant this winter. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a card up here in the corner where you can go and watch that video to get caught up on where we're at now. So basically, by doing core aeration, we're going to reap a lot of benefits. One is this is going to help with soil compaction. Uh, soil compaction can stop your grass from uh, retaining water in the root system, being able to get nutrients down into the root system, and if it rains or you water your yard, it could result in leaching where it just rinses the nutrients off the top and it drains away somewhere else. Core aeration will break up that soil loosen it and allow water and nutrients to get down to the roots. The reason I'm doing it right now is because, like I said, I'm trying to get this Bermuda to last all winter long here in South Mississippi where our winters are pretty mild. So I feel like core aerating is going to allow me to be able to provide this grass and the root system with the best nutrients to keep a hardy plant and make it through this winter. So this, like I said, this is the Bluebird. 742 aerator this is a uh, five tine and it's got weights here on the side to help you get good penetration now one thing to remember whenever you're doing core aeration you want to water this the night before water your grass water the area that you're going to be core aerating the night before so that the ground is soft enough for it to penetrate and take out a good core now in this video, I'm not going to be top dressing this yard after I core aerate. I'm going to allow the ground to just relax and let the holes heal from like water or just the pressure of the stress of the ground. I'm just going to let it relax and let the holes fill on their own. There is a section of this yard that I will aerate and then be top dressing with sand. But that is a surprise at the end of the video. So that's enough talking. Let's get this thing fired up and start punching some holes in the ground. This is the surprise I was telling you about. Yes, I cut a golf green in my Bermuda in November. But don't worry, I got a plan. So basically, I cut this down to and scalped it at like a quarter of an inch, like three weeks ago. And I just really wanted to push this grass to the limit the same way that I'm doing with trying to keep my Bermuda alive all winter and I know it's a bad time and it's a real cool part of the year but I wanted to push this and see how low I could cut it just so that I know because if this grass can't hang and do what I want it to then I'm gonna kill it all and swap it out for Tahoma 31 so let me uh, turn the camera around let you take a look at it and uh, see what it's looking like before we start poking holes in it all right, so as you can see, it's handling it pretty good. It's uh, it's starting to green up again from the last time I cut it, which was at 3 8 So I was going to maintain it at a half inch, but it was doing so good, I went ahead and took it down to 3 8 But I'll get down here so you can see it. Excuse my breathing. But you can see 
how low it is and how small these grass blades are. Now this stuff is really sprouting up for some, from some uh, fertilizer that I put on it in the last video, which was the Scott's Grain Max. But you can see, and I'll show it like this, that stuff is doing really, really good at 3 eighths of an inch. Man, it's just doing so good. I mean, you can see it's like, like right here, look how thick that is. Man, it's doing good. Looks like the old golf green took a pounding. But I gotta say it's a pretty good looking core. Not much thatch, just dirt and uh, grass there. So, not too shabby. The old outlet and the scarifier's been doing the trick. But anyway, I'm gonna let these cores dry overnight because they're pretty muddy and pretty mushy. So, Whenever I run over them with the outlet to pick them up, I don't want to smash them in and smear them into the, the grass. So I think we'll let these dry overnight and then get them up in the morning. Baby, grab one of those cores. I'm not. No, I want to show you something. It's just, I'm not touching just it. Just grab a core. It looks like poo-poo. I'm not touching it. It's fine. It's not poo-poo. Just grab one I of can't. them. I want to show the YouTube audience Why a core I to because I'd like your help. You're like Vanna White for me. Uh, I don't want to touch just it. Just like poo -poo. pick up one with your fingers. Just not that one. That is poop. No, it's not. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. It's a core. It does look like poop though, don't it? Yes, I don't want to touch it. I don't even like looking at it. It makes me kind of sick to even just look at it. Alright, today we're going to be getting up all these cores with my outlet mower. Now, this is one of the things that I love about this outlet mower. I think Swordman also has these attachments. But because of how versatile this mower is, it allows it to be more than just one machine. So, I've already taken my, my reel out of it, my reel cartridge. And this is the Scarifier cartridge. You can see it's got little fingers on it right here. And you can lower the mower down to where you can pick up any kind of debris. Leaves, pine straw. In this case, we'll be picking up cores. And I can tell you right now, this is going to be so much easier than out here trying to rake all this up with a rake and a wheelbarrow and all of that. So, let's get started. Light it up, light it up. So what I have here is some quick creek sand from uh, from Lowe's. It's called play sand. And instead of pouring it out and raking it around, I'm gonna try to use this and see if it works. Uh, such a small area, I'm gonna use my spreader and try to see if I can spread the sand kind of evenly. And then when I'm done with that, I'll use a shop broom and I'm gonna brush it in and level it. So. We're running out of daylight, so let's get started. Bye. 
I would say that worked out pretty well. You can see, I covered up the dirt and the stolons and everything, and now all you have is leaf blades sticking up. Now, I may have to get some more sand so that I can get these holes filled up, but we're gonna go ahead and brush it in and see what it looks like. This is what I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna like let the weight of it drag behind me and uh, see what it does. I can see running that brush across it allowed all those leaf blades to come back above the sand so you can really see and that's gonna look so good so that's all we was really doing kind of leveling but mainly just ag agitating it so that the leaf blades would get back above the sand all right so I've got a little bit of green max Scott's green max it's a uh, 2702 I'm just going to throw out a couple of handfuls of this just to help this stuff pop back and really start growing through this sand like it needs to. Alright, so we got it aerated. Put a little sand on it, just a light coat of sand, a few mils. And then got out some fertilizer. Next step is to water it in. Watering it in is going to allow the real settling and leveling to take place. Once this sand gets wet, it really has a chance to settle, and then the sand can work its way down into these core holes. Core, not corn. Because of the wholesome aeration, this fertilizer and this water is gonna be able to get down into that root zone, and we really should see some good top growth out of this. So let's water it in. you can see that water pretty much leveled that sand out and you almost can't see it no more and all the grass blades are sticking up above the sand so and all of this is just in the nick of time because tonight it's going to get down to 35 degrees so the grass has enough time to dry before frost but we've got water down in that root system and that is going to help insulate it and make it through the night so that the frost doesn't kill this Bermuda so I think the aerating process went really good. Got a lot of holes in the ground, really opened up that canopy to be able to get nutrients and water and everything down into the root system. And now as you can see, I'm putting some water to it. That's pretty much it. You wet the ground the day before you're gonna aerate. Rent or buy an aerator. I rented that one for $68 for 24 hours. Really cheap. And then you can top dress your whole yard if you want to. I chose not to. And, but if you wanna top dress, you can see how I did it there with the sand on the golf green. And that really fills in those, those holes and helps level your ground after core aeration, so grass has been through a lot in the last couple of days with the core aerating and the scarifier to pick up the cores and the grass is feeling a little rough right now so I'm just going to keep watering it in and let this grass relax and heal and probably get a cut in tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up because that really helps the channel, it helps YouTube know that you like the video and that it's something they should push out to other people. And Appreciate y'all watching, and we'll see y'all in the next one. God bless you.